und äh, 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 äh. of uh, rights related to marriages. Um, as we know that uh, traditional, well, we call this tradition, but that is something of uh, a debate. Uh, the issue of Ubutwala or child marriages or forced marriages so for that matter has been something that has been prominent in the country. And we know that uh, our legislation attempts to uh, address that as, uh, as a country. Although, of course, you have that situation of having a legislation and then the, the challenges of implementation. But in relation to, to, to this article, as uh, uh, honorable members will note uh, the advice from the Department of Justice uh, 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 by the way of the, the, the legal uh, opinion produced, you can see that the area of child marriages need to be looked at, uh, so to speak, in terms of, I mean, it needs to be scrutinized because a word missing or more words added uh, can change actually uh, uh, the, 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 the meaning of the section of that uh, uh, clause. So uh, that does need to be scrutinized as far as uh, our country is concerned, because we, our constitution is very clear in terms of how, uh, in, in terms of the protection of the rights of children. Um, in, in terms of uh, this uh, particular situation, in terms of child marriages, one of the things that we have noted as the CGE, as we we're conducting this uh, monitoring research is that although this was initially as a tradition, had various reasons that were justified perhaps in that context around how difficult it might have been for couples to get together. Therefore, you had the situation of eloping and so forth. But this, as, as culture has evolved, we can see that it has resulted in elements of criminality, if we can put it that way, where young children that are below the age of consent are often abducted and usually by, uh, by uh, elderly men. Uh, and the, the, the common occurrence, the average uh, in the studies that we have uh, conducted, even outside this particular report, the individual cases that we have conducted as indicated here, uh, honorable members, the average, uh, uh, I will call them perpetrators at this stage, uh, uh, the males would be uh, 50 plus. 
and the children, as we can see, range from the age of 12 uh, to your 16 or so forth, which is where the law in our country is clear how a parental consent and perhaps the consent of the minister is, is gets involved when uh, the age of the child uh, is in question. So these, these are some of the things that the law is um, uh, addressing, uh, but it, it, it's, it's, it's obviously, as we are sitting here, something that we need to scrutinize. Honorable members, the rest of the uh, presentation look at uh, many other different articles of, of the protocol. I be guided if honorable members want me to continue or maybe leave it at the topic of uh, focus today, which relates to child marriages. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you very much, uh, CEO, for the presentation. Uh, comrades, I will request, honorable members, I will request for hands that will seek to ask questions or comments on the presentation that has been made by CGE so that we can move uh, to the next item, which is going to be our open meeting, which had to start at um, half past nine, uh, but we are running behind schedule. So I will request for hands that will make inputs or comments or questions on the presentation. Okay, I'm not seeing any honorable members. I will therefore take it that everybody is happy. Uh, we don't have any questions or, or seeking clarity on the presentation. And you will then allow me to then move on to our next agenda item, which is a presentation by the Parliamentary Legal Services on Legal Opinion on Agreement on the Amendment of the SADC Protocol on Gender and Development. Okay, let us appreciate the presentation, CEO. We are not having any questions from the honorable members. Thank you very much for your time and you, uh, the presentation. Thank you, thank you, CEO. Honorable members, let us then uh, now receive the next presentation, thank you, which we will Chief. receive Sorry. from. Uh, Barbara Lutz from Parliamentary Legal Services. Over to you, Barbara. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Honorable Members. Um, I will be very brief in my presentation. Uh, the instruction we received from the committee was to look at uh, two issues whether there is a risk for the amended SADC protocol to um, stand in conflict with our domestic law. And if that is the case, uh, to uh, perhaps provide some guidance to the committee as to how it would uh, go about considering its support to the National Assembly. Um, Chair, just as a background, and I'm not going to delve too much in it because I know colleagues from the departments will deal with this more um, in more detail. Uh, we are a signatory to the SADC protocol on gender and development as it like in the unamended form. Um, that just provides for women empowerment, elimination of discrimination, equity through development and implementation of legislation, policies and programs. So it gives a general structure that falls within the ambit of the mandate of the committee as well as the mandate of the Department of Women, um, Youth and, and Persons with Disabilities. So the mandates in general are aligned with what this SADC protocol seeks to do. The legal framework that is triggered in the question um, and what the committee is doing currently and the question of whether there is a domestic con a conflict is um, linked to section 231 of the constitution that says that South Africa has a dualistic approach when it comes to international instruments. So on the one hand, the executive will, enter, will um, negotiate the agreements and, and that then in the international community is their role. And then on the other hand, for the dualistic approach, it only becomes law once it is um, affected into our legislation, where then the obligation of the National Assembly and the National Council of Provinces come in to look at it and to approve it so that it can um, go into that process. So uh, obligations have those two arms. And the committee is then in terms of section 2312, looking at this to see um, where it will fit in and what needs to change and 
how to proceed. So for purposes of just an overview of the protocol chair, um, the members and uh, the, uh, the amendments in general appear uncontroversial. They um, speak to general issues that fall within the mandate. So as a, as a whole, if you just look at the, at the general provisions, I, uh, from our officer side, we can't pick up anything, but there are three little niggly situations um, where we looked at the opinion of the Office of the Chief Law Advisor of, uh, it was dated August 2018 that was provided to the committee. And in that they indicated also that the majority of the articles do not change the sub substance of the study protocol. And we agree with that. But we also share their concern that there are like three, um, three uh, articles where it deals with the focus of the shift or the uh, shift in focus as to how to approach the prohibition of child marriages. Currently there is a, um, a the protocol allows for exceptions if it's specified in law. So the current article 8 says prior to the or, or article 8 reads that no person under the age of 18 shall marry unless otherwise specified in law. And our law currently aligns with that where um, as uh, it was just pointed out, we do have certain pieces of legislation. The minister can, um, could, there can be ministerial exceptions, there can be parental um, uh, consent exceptions, and there, there are in our law certain exceptions. So that in general, no person under the age of 18 shall marry, but in line with how Article 8 now reads, our domestic law aligns with that. Um, then there's also the amendment that they seek to Article 11, which will now create an obligation on member states to develop concrete measures, not only to prevent, but to eliminate child marriages. So it shifts from, um, from the exception position to a complete prohibition with an obligation on the state to affect that. And Article 20, if it's now amendment will, amended, will have that same um, extent that is, uh, that is made wider for the provision of of an obligation on the states to develop and develop strategic strategies to prevent and eliminate, amongst other things, child marriage. So just those three provisions have a little bit of a question mark when it comes to the issue of is our domestic law in conflict with the proposed amendments. Um, and the the issue here is that we have the. Um, the Marriages Act at the moment and the Recognition of Customary Marriages Act that allows for the exceptions, as I mentioned. So the crisp clear answer is currently, if this amendment is signed, those three provisions will be in conflict with our domestic law. But that does not mean that there can't be a shift in regulatory um, position and that there can't be policy changes. And such, such a policy change won't be um, in conflict with anything that our constitution is saying or the and the Children's Act in, in um, in actual fact, already prescribes 18 as the age of adulthood. So there is move, there is room for movement in here, but the law will need to change and there will need to be a policy change in that aspect. And for that reason, we are also in agreement with the DERCO memo of 2018. We have not unfortunately seen any um, new memos, so we are limited to what we, we were provided as an office. And they also said that amendments provided will give rise to conflict between the provisions contained in the protocol as amended and the South African domestic law. So there will have to be a review of domestic law in relation to child marriages should South Africa sign it um, to bring South Africa then in line with that signed international perspective, uh, position. Um, and for that then, um, our concern as an office is that this may place the committee in a bit of a um, tricky position because when it comes to issues of marriage, that falls in the scope of the Department of Home Affairs and not within the scope of the Department of Women. So that then grows, takes it out, those three clauses, 11, 8, 11, and 20, strictly speaking, when it comes to the potential impact on legislation, what would need to be, be amended and further administered falls outside the scope then also of this committee. So just for, uh, from our officer side to try and be as helpful as possible in acknowledging that there is currently a conflict with the domestic law as it is now to perhaps um, propose that the committee can in general, if it, if it is indeed in support of the, of the general articles, um, pronounce such a, a support in a report to the National Assembly, but perhaps express the committee's reservation with regard to articles 8, 11 and 20 with that um, element of that it falls within the, the mandate 
of a different committee and a different department so as to allow for, for or, or allow acknowledgements of the multi-departmental approach that is um, brought into this arena. And I think colleagues from the departments will be able to give the committee more insight into the actual policy developments that are currently taking place that we don't have insight into yet and how things have been aligned. And perhaps it would also be beneficial for the committee to seek advice from the National Assembly with the um, in reporting, would you just like the conditions of the consultation uh, with um, other committees uh, uh, cancel out uh, that, uh, that scenario? But the, the concern is just that um, you know, to impose an obligation um, from one committee and one department on another committee and another department department if it is not something that falls into the, the mandate of the current committee in the department when it comes to future legislative amendments. Um, Chair, thank you. That is as far as I can take it. Thank you very much, Chair Barbara, for, for, for the presentation and the insights that you, has, that you have given us on the side of the legal services of parliament. I will then take uh, uh, honorable members who wish to, to, to make any questions for clarity on the presentation that has been made. But I, I think, um, Barbara, it's not clear really how best legal services would advise us as a committee, specifically the Committee of Women, Youth and Persons with Disability to proceed with, 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 with such a matter, given the, the, the implications that you have said, uh, that they, uh, it has on the scope of uh, some of the clauses falling under a different department, which is the Department of uh, 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 um, which is the Department of Home Affairs. So, how best would would, would legal services uh, uh, advise the committee to proceed in such a matter? I will then, uh, uh, honourable members, take hands if you are having any questions of clarity on the presentation from legal services. But you may proceed for the time being, Barbara, to, 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 to answer that one question. Thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, this is where it becomes tricky when it comes to legal advice and procedural advice, as I don't want to step into an area that um, isn't my expertise. Uh, what we as legal services identified is that there is this area, this gray area where the one mandate moves into the other one and there is an overlap. Um, so our, our advice in perhaps just noting the reservation um, in the committee's uh, report, and here I must just qualify reservation. I mean, here it's not reservation in uh, international law sense, but just a, a concern reservation from the committee itself in that there is this gray area and overlap. And perhaps note that in the report and then let the National Assembly guide as to how it should be resolved from a procedural matter, whether um, those three articles should be considered by the uh, Portfolio Committee on Home Affairs, whether the Portfolio Committee of Home Affairs and the Portfolio Committee and Women should look at it together, whether the National Assembly has a different um, approach to it. But I think this is where the, uh, the procedural area for me becomes a little bit gray. Um, I don't want to say it must be rule this or that uh, because it's not my area of expertise, but perhaps um, the support staff and the, and the Secretariat of the Committee can liaise with the National Assembly to make sure that when the committee writes the report that the, that the correct phrasing is used to facilitate such a um, cooperative approach to this, to ensure that the, what a report of the Portfolio Committee on Women does not place an obligation on someone else or another committee that they do not have insight into. Um, I hope that will assist you. Okay, it assists us very uh, uh, greatly. So uh, Barbara, thank you so much. Uh, Honourable members, I'm not seeing any hands that seek uh, to make comments or ask questions on the presentation from legal services. I will then proceed to the next agenda item, which is the presentation by the Department of Women with and Persons with Disabilities on the progress made on the agreement amending the SADC protocol and uh, on gender and development. I see the hand of uh, uh, Honourable Pity before we proceed to the departmental presentation. Honorable Peter, I'll hand over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair, and a very good morning to, to honorable members, as well as um, the team from CGE. 
and and any other colleagues uh, on the the call. Chair, just a quick question. I want to to understand what exactly is then the the, the position of the committee in regards to to the advice that has been given by legal services. Are we saying that the report will be put together with the idea that there will be uh, an explicit part that refers to um, the reservation of the committee to, to accepting um, the protocol as, as, as the fact that it obviously conflicts with, with imposing an action on another department, but also is in contravention uh, with with some of our domestic law. So I just wanted to understand what is the, the conclusion of that conversation. Thank you. Um, thank you, Honorable Piti. Um, we are still to receive the other presentations from Home Affairs, from Justice, as well as from the department. But currently in terms of the presentation from legal services, uh, we would, as a committee, consider moving in, a, in the direction where we adopt the amendments uh, that speak to us as a department. But uh, in terms of the ones that fall outside the scope of the Department of Women, which is Article 8, Article 11, and Article 20, we do so with reservations since those uh, specific articles are falling outside the scope and the mandate of the Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities. They are lying uh, with the, the Department of um, a, a, a Home Affairs as, the, as, as, as they speak to specifically the legislation that uh, is uh, dealt with by the Department of Home Affairs. Uh, but I think it's a discussion that the committee will be having, having considered the presentations from the Department of Women, the Department of Justice, as well as the Department of Home Affairs. Can we proceed, Honorable Mpiti? Okay. Thank you, Honorable Mpiti. Uh, DDG, I'll hand over to you and your team as the minister has, um, has apologized together with the DG. I will hand over to uh, the DDG Shoki as well as uh, Ranji to make the presentation on the progress on the side of the department. DDG Shoki. Good morning, Chairperson, and good morning, members of the Portfolio Committee. Indeed, in the midst, I am accompanied by Madam Ranji Reddy. She is the one that will be taking us through the SADAC protocol, and I will hand over to her immediately. Madam Ranji. Thank you, uh, Acting uh, DG. Um, Madam Chair, may I ask for sharing rights? Uh, the slides are still showing on my side. Or will the slides be presented? Uh, Nelly, so please may you hand over sharing rights to Ranji. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've given him. Oh, yes, thank you. Um, Chair, I'm going to put it onto a uh, slideshow. I hope I don't have a difficulty um, because we're having some challenges with connection. Now it's not going into slideshow. Yo. Okay, I will continue, Chair. Um, you can press from the beginning. It will uh, project a slideshow. There's an icon there that says from the beginning. On the top left-hand corner, yes, from there, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, so, so good morning to chair and honorable chair and honorable mem uh, members. We are presenting uh, the amendments that the that have been made to the SADC protocol. Um, we'll give you a slight background and we'll share with you a bit on the certification, the proposed amendments, and the summary of the process. Now, according to as uh, been already mentioned, uh, Section two three one two of the Constitution of South Africa. An international agreement binds the Republic only after it has been approved by resolution in both the National Assembly and the National Council of Provinces. 
South Africa signed the SADC Protocol on Gender and Development on 17th August 2008 and ratified in October 2012 without reservations. It was entered into force on 22 February 2013. Now, South Africa has an obligation to comply with its commitments uh, that it is party to. In July 2018, uh, the SADC ministers responsible for gender and women's affairs met in Cameroon, where they looked at the, the um, older version of the protocol, and they wanted to tighten and strengthen some of the articles. So it was indicated that um, in that meeting that only 10 members uh, had signed the agreement uh, that was amending the SADC protocol. Um, and those, those are on the screen, Angola, Botswana, DRC, Lesotho, Madagascar, Mozambique, Swaziland, Tanzania, and Zimbabwe. Now, at that meeting, we also informed them that we were not able to sign the agreement because we had certain issues to be raised. Um, so at the minister's meeting that took place uh, subsequently in Johannesburg in July 2018, the former minister in the presidency responsible for women informed the summit of the intention of South Africa to sign the agreement and that we were going to put it through the parliamentary processes. So subsequently, the agreement was submitted to the state law advisors at both the Departments of Justice and Constitutional Development and the Department of International Relations and Cooperation for Certification. Now, on 7th August in 2018, we received the certification from uh, the Department of Justice, uh, the Office of the Chief State Law Advisor, which said that the agreement is in order and compatible with the domestic laws of the Republic. The Department of Women then submitted the agreement to the Department of uh, International Relations and Cooperation for Certification on whether it is consistent with international law and with South Africa's other international obligations. On 6th of September in 2018, we then received as the department the legal opinion from DERCO, uh, from the state law advisor, indicating that the agreement will impact on our domestic legislation, as is being discussed uh, earlier today. Therefore, the matter falls under the ambit of section 2312 of the constitution. And the department was advised to submit the agreement to parliament for approval before the president could sign uh, the amendments. The Sorry, department Ranji. of women, Ma? Ranji, uh, your slides, um, your slideshow isn't moving. We're still on the first slide. Okay, I think, I think that's the network problem. Can I go back to, using the other version yeah okay that's fine okay that's perfect okay all right so the department of women presented uh, to the portfolio committee on women youth and persons with disabilities during august 2019 for deliberation by the committee the committee had indicated that it would take the matter under consideration. Next slide, please. Uh, the following amendments are made to the SADC Protocol and Gender and Development. Uh, Article 4 is amended by inserting immediately after paragraph 1, the following paragraph 2. State parties shall develop and strengthen specific laws, policies, and programs to achieve gender equality and equity. Now, in this article, if we are to strengthen specific laws, it also applies then to articles 8, 11, 20, that is concerning South Africa. Article five is amended by deleting affirmative action wherever it appears and it replaces it with special measures. Now, the, this was a clause a chair. Uh, the use of the word affirmative action is what prevented uh, a number of member states, I think particularly Mauritius, from uh, uh, initially um, signing this protocol. And uh, it was then agreed that affirmative action needed to be time bound. And we use the language of uh, the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination, 
where they talk about temporary special measures. So that was then uh, agreed by all the member states. Uh, Article 8 is the one that is uh, currently under contention. It is amended now to read as no person under the age of 18 shall marry. So there are no clauses in, in the statement, in the amended amendment. Next slide, please. Article 10 was amended to read as widows and widowers' rights. Previously, it was just referring to uh, women, but now it, because it's gender equality, it's widows and widowers' rights. And the state party shall enact and enforce legislation to ensure that widows and widowers are not subjected to inhuman, humiliating, or degrading treatment, automatically become guardians and custodians of their children when their husband or wife dies, unless otherwise determined by a competent court of law, um, have the right to an equitable share in the inheritance of the property of their spouses, have the right to remarry any person of their choice, and have protection against all forms of violence and discrimination based on their status. This uh, article was strengthened quite specifically because there were uh, 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 many issues on widows and their rights, particularly with inheritance and, and remarrying, and, uh, which necessitated uh, member states to reconsider. Uh, next article, please. So the article 11 speaks to the, the girl and, then, uh, and the boy child. And it says state parties shall adopt laws, policies and programs to ensure the development and protection of the girl and the boy child by eliminating all forms of discrimination against them in the family, community, institutions, and at state level, ensuring that they have equal access to education and healthcare and are not subjected to any treatment which causes them to develop a negative self-image, ensuring that they enjoy the same rights and are protected from harmful cultural attitudes and practices in accordance with the UNCRC and the African Charter on the Rights and Welfare of the Child. Uh, protect them from economic exploitation, trafficking and all forms of violence, including sexual abuse, and ensuring that they have equal access to information, education, services and facilities on sexual and reproductive health and rights. Next slide, please. Um, it continues, state parties shall develop concrete measures to prevent and eliminate violence, harmful practices, child marriages, forced marriages, teenage pregnancies, genital mutilation, and child labor, as well as mitigate their impact on girls' and boys' health, well-being, education, future opportunities, and, and earnings. Article 12, paragraph 1 was amended to read as follows. State parties shall endeavor to ensure equal and effective representation of women in decision-making positions in the political, public, and private sectors, including through the use of special measures as provided for in Article 5. Next slide, please. Article 14 was amended to read as follows. State parties shall enact laws that promote equal access to retention and completion in early childhood education, primary, secondary, tertiary, vocational and non-formal education, including adult literacy in accordance with the protocol on education and training and the sustainable development goals. State parties shall take special measures to increase the number of girls taking up science, technology, engineering and mathematics subjects and ICT at the primary, secondary, tertiary, and higher levels, and state parties shall adopt and implement gender-sensitive educational curricula, policies, and programs addressing the gender stereotypes in education and gender-based violence, amongst others. Next slide, please. Article 16 was amended to read multiple roles of women. State parties shall conduct time use studies and adopt policy measures to promote shared responsibility between men and women 
within their household and family to ease the burden of the multiple roles played by women. B, recognize and value unpaid care and domestic work through the provision of public services, infrastructure, and social protection policies. Article 17 was amended to read economic empowerment. State parties shall undertake reforms to give men and women equal rights and opportunity to economic resources and improved access to control and ownership over productive resources, land, and other forms of property, financial services, inheritance, and natural resources. Next slide, please. Article 17 was uh, continued. State parties shall review their national trade and entrepreneurship policies to make them gender responsive. State parties shall, in accordance with uh, special measures in Article 5, develop strategies to ensure that women benefit equally from economic opportunities, including those created through public, public procurement. Next slide, please. Article 19 uh, is amended as follows. State parties shall review, amend, and enact laws and develop policies that ensure women and men have equal access to wage employment, to achieve full and productive employment, decent work, including social protection and equal pay for work of equal value for all women and men in all sectors in line with the SADC protocol on employment and labor. Then Article 20, paragraphs one and five are amended as follows. State parties shall enact and enforce legislation prohibit prohibiting all forms of gender-based violence. Next uh, slide, please. Um, it, uh, state parties are expected to develop strategies to prevent and eliminate all harmful social and cultural practices such as child marriage, forced marriage, teenage marriage, teenage pregnancies, slavery, and female genital mutilation. To ensure that perpetrators of gender-based violence, including domestic violence, rape, femicide, sexual harassment, female genital mutilation, and all other forms of gender-based violence are tried by court of competent jurisdiction. Next slide, please. State parties shall enact and adopt specific legislative provisions to prevent trafficking in persons and provide holistic services to the victims with the aim of reintegration into society. Put in place mechanisms by which all relevant law enforcement authorities and institutions should eradicate national, regional, and international trafficking in persons syndicates. Put in place harmonized data collection mechanisms to improve research and reporting on the types and modes of trafficking. Ensure establish bilateral and multilateral agreements to run joint actions against trafficking in persons among origin, transit, and destination countries. Ensure capacity building, awareness raising, and sensitization campaigns on trafficking in persons are put in place for law enforcement officials. Next slide, please. Article 25 was amended to read as follows. Integrated approaches was the heading. State parties shall adopt integrated approaches, including institutional cross-sector structures with the aim of eliminating gender-based violence. Part seven of the protocol was amended to read sexual and reproductive health and reproductive rights. Um, and Article 26 on this uh, states that state party shall, in line with the SADC protocol and health and other regional and international commitments by member states on issues relating to health, adopt and implement legislative frameworks, policies, programs, and services to announce gender sensitive, appropriate, and affordable healthcare in particular to, next slide, please.
So in order to eliminate maternal mortality, to develop and implement policies and programs to address mental, sexual, and reproductive health needs of women and men in accordance with the ICPD and the Beijing Platform of Action. Ensure the provision of hygiene and sanitary facilities and nutritional needs of women, including those that are in prison. Article 27 on HIV and AIDS was amended so that it reads as follows. State parties shall take every step necessary to adopt and implement gender sensitive policies and programs. Enact legislation that will address prevention, treatment, care and support in accordance with, but not limited to, the Maseru Declaration on HIV and AIDS and the SADC sponsored UN CSW resolution on the girl child and HIV and AIDS and the political declaration on HIV and AIDS. Next slide, please. State parties shall ensure that the policies and programs referred to in sub article take account of the unequal status of women, the particular vulnerability of the girl child, as well as harmful practices and the biological factors that result in women constituting the majority of those infected and affected by HIV and AIDS. State parties shall develop gender sensitive strategies to prevent new infections, to ensure universal access to HIV and AIDS treatment for infected women, men, girls, and boys, and develop and implement policies and programs to ensure appropriate recognition of work carried out by caregivers, the majority of whom are women, the allocation of resources and the psychological support for care for caregivers, as well as promote the involvement of men in the care and support of people living with HIV and AIDS. Next slide, please. Article 28 was amended. The article heading is now reading as gender in media information and communication. And paragraph one reads as state parties shall enact legislation and develop national policies and strategies, including professional guidelines and codes of conduct to prevent and address gender discrimination in the media. Paragraph four of the article reads as, state parties shall take measures to promote the equal representation of men and women in the ownership of and decision-making structures of the media. Next uh, slide, please. Insertion of part 10. Uh, this is a new addition into the protocol. Um, we added part 10 on gender and the environment. State parties shall, in accordance with multilateral, continental and regional agreements on the environment, sustainable development and climate change, adopt measures to address the impact of climate change and environmental degradation on gender, promote active participation by men, women, boys and girls in the protection of the environment to mitigate climate change and promote sustainable ex uh, exploitation and use of natural resources to develop policy strategies and program that address gender issues with respect to the environment, uh, climate change and sustainable development and conduct research to assess the differential gendered impacts of climate change and put in place effective adaptation measures. Next slide, please. So amendment of part 10, and its subsequent, subsequent articles are amended by changing their numbers uh, in a sequential matter, manner. Um, amendment of Article 33, Paragraph 1 is amended. State parties shall ensure uh, gender-sensitive and responsive budgets and planning, including designating the necessary resources towards initiatives aimed at empowering women and girls. Uh, next uh, slide, please. So amendment of Article 35 states that a state party shall ensure the implementation of this protocol at the national level in line with the SADC implementation action plans and the SADC monitoring evaluation and reporting framework. Um, the, the protocol, once amended, will enter into force on the date of its adoption by a decision of three quarters of the member states that are parties to the protocol. And in terms of deposition, 
The original text of this agreement shall be deposited with the Executive Secretary of SADC, who shall transmit certified copies to all member states. The Executive Secretary of SADC shall register this agreement with the Secretariat of the UN, the Commission of the African Union, and, and other such organization as the Council of SADC may determine. Next just slide, please. So Chair, in summary, the guidelines on concluding international agreements are provided for in, in the Manual on Executive Acts of the President of South Africa, 2006. The process of concluding international agreements entails certification on the consistency with domestic law from the uh, Office of the Chief State Law Advisor at the Department of Justice. Uh, also obtaining a legal opinion on the co compliance and consistency with international law and South Africa's international obligations from the, the SLA at Durko. Approval by parliament, which is what we are trying to do now, in terms of section 2312 of the constitution, the relevant department must thereafter prepare a president's minute for signing by the minister and the president. Following that, a short explanatory memorandum, two legal opinions, and the copy of the agreement must be forwarded to Durko for certification in a prescribed format before we submit to the president for approval. Next slide, please. So this is the last slide, Chair. The recommendation we are making is that to date, it is only South Africa and one other member state who still has not signed the agreement to amend the protocol. The SADC Secretariat has indicated that it needed to urgently publish the document in October this year, 2021, and it will do so with the, or without the last two member states' signature. Uh, so we are then consequently written to SADC Secretariat explaining the situation of the recess uh, of parliament due to the local government elections, and we asked for some leeway in this regard. Um, we, were, we were granted a, a, a leeway. We therefore approached the national, sorry about the typo, the National Assembly and the National Council of Provinces to, to assist by expediting the process of approval for the country to sign. And it's uh, because we are holding SADC from, from this process and we are in abeyance from August 2019. Um, uh, Chair, since then, the NCOP has completed its responsibilities in this regard. And now we are just waiting, uh, waiting the process of the National Assembly. Uh, Chair, I just want to conclude by saying that um, you will notice that this amendments to the SADC protocol are really taking on board the issue of gender equality, not just the empowerment of women and girls, but gender equality. It's really strengthened and it, uh, it will allow for, for us to, to reach our objective of women's empowerment, uh, achievement of, uh, of opportunities and, and uh, elimination of discrimination. However, I also want to, to just uh, indicate to the, to the committee uh, chair that generally it's, it's not advisable to, to put in reservations uh, to an international instrument. It becomes quite challenging to remove them at a later stage. I would like to remind the committee that we had placed three reservations on the Maputo Protocol. And South Africa is currently being urged by the African Union to, to withdraw those reservations. And we are engaging on that, but it is proving a little challenging. Secondly, um, um, Chair, the SADC Protocol and the amendment on particularly the issue of the uh, elimination of child marriages is a process that will probably be sorted out in terms of our domestic legislation in a, in a few years. So I'm, I'm, I'm putting forward on the table that if we place a reservation on this, uh, on this articles, then what would be the implication for us in terms of, of being an influential uh, a country, a member state in SADC, we generally tend to, to lead and I don't know how it will be looked at diplomatically, diplomatically. So I would like the committee to also consider that angle. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you for the opportunity. 
Thank you very much, uh, Ranji, and thank you, Didi Jishoki, for the presentation from the Department of Women, Youth, and Persons with Disabilities. Honorable members, the presentation has been uh, put before us as a portfolio committee. I must also, uh, uh, honorable members, acknowledge the presence of the portfolio committee on justice. Uh, we have uh, received an apology from the Minister of Justice who is abroad. The Deputy Minister is attending another meeting and the DG is attending to the hearings. We have, we have received those apologies. Also, we had invited the Portfolio Committee on Health, uh, sorry, on Home Affairs. They unfortunately could not attend this meeting due to their own Portfolio Committee meeting uh, sitting today but they have sent the departmental representatives who will be uh, doing a presentation in today's meetings. So we are welcoming our colleagues from the Portfolio Committee on Justice uh, and uh, Correctional Services. Honorable members, here is the presentation from the department. I will then uh, move forward and take hands that seek to ask questions of clarity, make comments and, uh, and, and any, any other comments they wish to make on the presentation. I'm not seeing any hands, but uh, maybe it's important to note honorable members that this presentation that is presented by the Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities today is not the first time that they've presented this presentation to the portfolio committee. I had mentioned before that the presentation was made to the portfolio committee uh, the last, I think, uh, towards the end of 2019. The portfolio committee had requested the department to do further consultations, specifically on the clauses that speak to child marriages. We had requested that they must, they must um, engage the Department of Home Affairs together with the Department of Social Development. They must also consult um, the religious leaders as well as the traditional sector on the matters concerned, as well as the child rights activists. Maybe Ranji, I would request for you to focus on what uh, the portfolio committee had raised in 2019. Can you just do a brief recap? Because we can tell, we can hear the background of which has been presented before. Can you now zoom in straight to the consultations that the department had requested or the portfolio committee had requested the department to make in relation to this specific clause? And what has been the outcome or what have been the outcomes of the consultations that you have made with the relevant department and the sectors that are concerned. I will hand back to you, Ranji, whilst I'm still noting the hands of honorable members who wish to make any comments or questions. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, uh, we, we actually started engaging with the Department of Home Affairs. Uh, we do have our legal representative here who will, who will also add to this. We did start consulting with the Department of Home Affairs um, when we presented to the portfolio committee on the issue of, uh, you know, the, the possibility of the amendment of legislation. So, Chair, there has been a number of uh, uh, consultations. And then the, the Department of Home Affairs, I think, uh, uh, released a, a, a media statement. The, pre, the, the minister released a, a media statement to talk about the, uh, the possibility of bringing all of the the marriage acts together into a single marriage bill and uh, uh, with the possibility of eliminating child marriages. And then subsequently, there was the uh, development of the policy by the Department of Home Affairs. And they did that, I think in, uh, there was an issues paper that was done by the South African Law Reform Commission, who then engaged with us in all of the invited us to all of the consultations. And um, in one of them, the DG of the department specifically engaged on the issues. And I'm also aware that the DG and Minister of, uh, of uh, Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities also engaged on this policy issues with the Minister of Home Affairs. 
But I will hand over to Ms. Nondomiso, our legal person who has been engaging in a more detailed way on these consultations. Chair, if that's permissible. So permission granted, Ranji. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, and good morning, everyone. I'm Nondumi Songolunga from the Department of Women, Youth, and Persons with Disabilities Legal Services. Indeed, Chairperson, after our meeting, after presenting the proposed amendments to the portfolio committee, we actually wrote to the Minister of Home Affairs with a, and made recommendations for the amendment of legislation that permits marriages between uh, children who are under 18. We were invited to have a meeting to, with the minister and indeed the meeting happened and the Minister of Justice was also available in the said meeting. And we actually made the proposal for the amendment of the legislation on marriages. And uh, our proposal or recommendation was welcomed and the minister actually invited us, the Minister of Home Affairs as the department to participate in their processes whereby they are developing a national policy that seeks to enact a single marriage statute. We actually did participate in the process and we made our recommendation. It was actually captured in the policy. The policy uh, outlaws, seeks to outlaw any marriages between children who are under 18. So our recommendation in terms of the proposed amendment on the SADC protocol, it was actually captured and uh, taken by the department's Department of Home Affairs. That is where we are. That is how far we went in terms of uh, ensuring that our domestic legislations are aligned with the proposed amendments of the SARC protocol. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Nondumiso. Did you show Chair, I am actually covered by my fellow colleagues. As I indicated at some point, in fact, I, need, I wish to indicate that beyond the processes that were led by the Department of Home Affairs in partnership with Justice, some of these processes were actually even tabled to the FOSAT uh, cluster of DGs. And that's where we also took part and made our own comments as a department. So we are quite okay with the level of participation at this point as the Department of Women supporting the lead departments in this regard. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, DDG Shoki. I think uh, maybe colleagues, if I had heard uh, legal services correctly, they were raising issues not only, not, not towards the, the international law reservations, but it was reservations on the procedural a, a matter because here we are speaking about the clause that relates to marriage legislation of which the portfolio committee on women is not the custodian of but i will allow uh, barbara to come back and um, a sort of uh, outline briefly uh, the the issue of reservations that 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 we ought to be to ought to be uh, raising which is a procedural a, a, a reservation and not reservation relating to international laws. Uh, Barbara, are you still in the meeting? Yes, Chairperson, I, I'm still here. Uh, yes, Chair, uh, that is indeed correct. My comment was with regard to the procedure, procedures of, of Parliament and in reporting to the National Assembly, perhaps the committee could express a general uh, support and then just note a reservation on specific support where it comes to issues that fall with the um, PC on Home Affairs and the Department on Home Affairs. Chair, as far as I know, perhaps Dirka will be best placed to... to um, indicate this, uh, SADC has its own uh, treaty provisions and with protocols and um, reservations on that international law aspect, I don't think is generally um, done on a SADC platform, but those two are, are distinguishable. I did not uh, speak to the reservation of the country to, um, to the articles, but merely just the committee expressing itself um, on mandate procedurally internally. 
in the National Assembly. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Barbara. I think you, you are clear in relation to, to the nature of the reservations that uh, we ought to be, to, be, to be expressing ourselves on as a portfolio committee. Honorable members, I'm only seeing one hand, which is the hand of Honorable Member Noma Temba Maseko Jele. Is there any other hand which wishes to uh, express themselves on the presentation from the Department of Women? Okay, over to you, Honorable Member Nomatemba Masekoche. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. My apologies for not opening my video. Uh, I'm not at the right place because I just landed. Uh, good morning, uh, Honorables, and good morning to our presenters also. Um, Chairperson, I think I would, would like to make a comment on the first presentation, that one of the amendment. Um, on, on Article uh, 14, uh, and also, I'm, I'm not sure going down, there's somewhere where I was reading when it was, it was talking about the issue of equality. In fact, Article 14 talks about um, boys and girls equality. So I wanted to find out from the department, uh, when you uh, working on this, uh, uh, um, these amendments, I just want to find out, the, uh, because I thought that uh, this can be the opportunity for us to level uh, some of the concerns that we've been having when it comes to the issue of um, equality, especially at the level of the boys and girls. Uh, when it comes to there is on, on Article 4, I'm sure it's point number three, if not two, where it says increase the number of uh, uh, girls uh, uh, when it comes to science and technology. So I thought that maybe is it not an opportunity, it's now an opportunity for us to say, to put it, I want to find out from the uh, legal and also the presenters if maybe, uh, if we put it clear and say strictly 50-50, uh, not saying increase the number and leave it that way, just be specific in saying we require where there is a, such an activity, 50-50, clearly 50-50. If maybe numbers are high, uh, girls are more, that can also be accommodated. And also on the issues of uh, equality, uh, 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 as mentioned in one of those articles down there in terms of the salaries, and, 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 and wages, I mean to say, wages and other things, uh, is it, will, will it be maybe causing a harm in specifying also, saying we require 50-50. Thank you, Chair. But with other, and apologies, Chair, with other presentations in terms of uh, uh, the home affairs presentation, I'm, I'm happy. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Noma Temba. I will hand over to, to, to DDG Shoki and uh, Ranji to respond. And then we will move to the next presentation, which will be receiving from the Department of Justice and Correctional Services. Uh, DDG Shoki and uh, Ranji, may you respond to the questions that have been raised by Honorable Person, in this instance, I think I will seek more input from our legal person who are the drafters. They can further guide whether that level of detail can be incorporated into um, the protocol. Um, one is not disputing, we understand where our member is coming from. 
but I would really seek to request that uh, Madam Nondumiso should also come in and guide on this one, or Madam Ranji herself. Thanks, uh, DG. I'll, I'll come in before Nondumiso. <clears throat> First of all, uh, Chair, uh, th this was a negotiated, uh, these are negotiated texts that obviously closed after the adoption of the, uh, the amendments by the ministers uh, responsible for women and gender affairs uh, in the member states. Um, so I don't think that we are now able as a country to go in and insert uh, any clause. Uh, it's, it's now for agreement because it's, a, it's agreed uh, compromise um, negotiated text. But on the issue of um, uh, the increase on the number of girls to STEM, uh, you see the way the the way the clause is written, it doesn't limit you. Uh, there are countries who are unable to put in a fifty percent clause and and work towards that, and they express their difficulties. But it doesn't stop other domestic uh, domestic uh, uh, policies and strategies to promote that. It doesn't stop us from promoting fifty percent as a as a as a country at our at a domestic level. So. We can do that in our domestic policies and, and, and uh, strategies. In terms of the equality on, on salaries and wages, it, it talks about equal pay for work of equal value, and it's promoting that countries adopt um, uh, legislation and policy measures towards equal pay for work of equal value. So that's moving towards, the well, that is the 50-50. And um, in our case, we already have amendments in the Employment Equity Act, and we have the codes uh, are promoting um, uh, the good codes of good practice, promoting equal remuneration for work, work of equal value. So uh, it's very possible at the national level to put in this 50-50, but to insert it into the clauses of the SADC uh, amendments will, will not possibly happen now. It means, the entire process has to be reopened at the SADC level. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, uh, Ranji. And before um, the legal services from the department, if I'm hearing you correctly, Ranji, you're saying that it is upon us as a country, um, or it is dependent on us on how we do domesticate or how we choose to domesticate the, the actual protocol or to domesticate the protocol itself. Yes, Chair. It, uh, it, okay. uh, in, in other words, the articles are, are, are kind of like the standard by which you work. Now you'll notice that in yes. some of those articles, our standards are actually higher than what's in there. You know, uh, yeah. but it's up to us in the country now, how we articulate that in our policies and so on. Thanks, Chair. Yeah. So we decide on how to make it more specific to us. Yes. At a yes, policy chair. level. At a, at a policy level. Yes, Chair. In fact, if okay. you look carefully through all the amendments, you will note that yeah. we probably have to strengthen some of our policies and measures that mm -hmm. we have in the country. Yes. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ranji. Um, non do me so. Do you have any more additions to make on the question raised? Not really, Chairperson. Thanks. I think Uranji has covered uh, it all. I think what I must clarify also, it is the role of the department in the whole process. The department is the custodian of the SADC protocol, not necessarily the domestic laws per se. Each and every department would be responsible for their own administration of their own legislation. But as the department, as the custodian of the SADC protocol, we are there to coordinate whenever there is a need or whenever it is necessary for us to play that coordinating role in terms of uh, making recommendations for the amendment of the local, uh, the domestic laws to be aligned to the SADC protocol. I think I just thought I need to clarify our role in terms of why it is us, the department, who is making this a uh, request to parliament. Thanks, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Nondumiso. Thank you, Ranji. Thank you, DDG Shoki. Honorable members will then move to the next item on the agenda, 
which is the briefing by the Department of Justice and Correctional Services on the progress made on the agreement amending SADC protocol on gender and development. We'll hand over to the Department of uh, Justice. I'm not sure who is leading the delegation on behalf of the department, but I will then hand over for the presentation to be made. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, my name is Tande Galujiza. I'm the Chief Director in International Legal Relations at the Department of Justice. I will make the presentation in the absence of our principals. Uh, I'm just gonna try and see if I can share it. Um, is, is it visible, Chairperson? Yes, it is, Tandega. May you also introduce your team? Oh, uh, uh, Chairperson, I think the one person who is also here is the parliamentary liaison officer from the office of the minister. I'm not sure if there are any more um, colleagues who have joined from the, from the department side other than me and him. Okay. If there are, he is much more welcome to indicate. Okay, no, that's fine. You may proceed with the presentation. We can see it. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I will skip, Chairperson, some of the uh, um, background um, slides because they have been covered mostly by the colleagues who have presented before us, where they indicate the background with re in, uh, in relation to the, amending, the agreement amending the protocol. Um, the main thing that I wanted to highlight, I think it's more aligned with what the presenters from the parliamentary legal services had also flagged was the issue that was found by the state law advisors from the Department of Justice concerning the conflict with the domestic legislation. And in this, in this uh, instance, more specifically with the issue of the uh, age of marriage. Um, and, and in highlighting that, we are aware that Currently, Home Affairs is embarking on a process of consultation. They have just done their green paper on marriages, which is going to take care of the age of majority or the age of, of, of marriage, which is going to be lifted up to 18 years to be in line with the agreement amending the SADAC protocol. However, I think the main concern is the fact that the proposed amendments regarding to that issue of age is not yet law in the Republic. So as the law currently still stands, we, it is still in conflict with, with what the SADA protocol is, is proposing. Um, and we just highlighted on this slide, the fact that the Derco State Law Advisors had made a presentation to the Portfolio Committee in 2019, where they had addressed the issue of section 2312 and the importance of having parliamentary approval before the agreement is signed because according to their analysis, it will bind states upon entry into force and we are aware that the agreement came into force in 2018 after it was signed by 12 countries. Now, um, the, the, the issue is, I think, on our last slide that we are raising, we are quite aware that it's important for South Africa to sign and be party to this protocol, not only just legally, but politically as well. But we, and, and we are proposing here that perhaps the Durko State Law Advisors can be approved. Post for an opinion on this reservation, in this protocol, but whether we can enter one on the provision that is currently in conflict with the current laws of the Republic. Because, uh, and, and that can be done with we're saying in two ways where the uh, parliament must be aware when it does the approval and must include such a reservation regarding those provisions that are still in conflict with our laws. And that, that reservation will unfortunately also have to be accepted by SADAC. Now it's not very clear whether the SADAC protocol as it stands, it allows or prohibits any reservations to be made, but that can be clarified by the state law advisors and whether we can do it. it might not be, uh, something that we would want to do politically, but legally speaking, as things stand now, the concern is the fact that our domestic law still conflict 
with some of the provisions in that protocol. Yes, we are in the process of amending it. We've got consultations that probably will take a long while, but the fact of the matter, we cannot run away from the fact that some of the provisions still have an, we still have an issue. So our presentation, we are more aligned with the issue that was raised by, by the legal uh, services from parliament. But as to how it, it can be handled by the, by, by the country, um, I think that the, the, the state law advisors will be much more better placed um, if we do not want to, to uh, put a, a reservation uh, on that matter. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tandek. Uh, um, before I, 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 I take hands from, from honorable members, if I may just ask a simple question from the Department of Women, Hiti Chishoki. Have you consulted with the Department of Justice on this matter? Okay, not to my knowledge um, specifically, but uh, Madam Nondumiso can clarify because she has been leading some of these processes or participating in them as well. Thank you, Chairperson. Yes, Chairperson, we did actually consult. Our first legal opinion was obtained from the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development. Thank you, Chair. Okay, if we may go back to the last slide from, from the presentation from the Department of Justice, Etandega. Okay, Chairperson, let me try. Technology and challenges. The, the, last, the, last, uh, the last slide. Okay, let Is it visible, Chairperson? Yes, it's visible. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> DDG Shoki and, and, and non Dumi. So there is a proposal that, uh, um, that the DECO state law advisors be approached for an opinion on whether South, African, South Africa can enter a reservation on the provisions in conflict with the current law of the Republic. Now, you would expect that before the document is brought back to us as a portfolio committee, such an activity would have taken place upon advice if the Department of Women had consulted with the Department of Justice. Now, one is tempted to ask the department on whether the proposal from the Department of Justice on the consultation of ITECO state law advisors has taken place or not. Thank you, Chairperson. I wish uh, to actually confirm that uh, DECO was also consulted and we received a legal opinion. It is actually the legal opinion that recommended that we take uh, the protocol, the, uh, the amendment protocol to, to, to Parliament. We do have uh, two legal opinions. One was obtained from the Department of Justice and it gave us a go ahead to proceed and submit to DECO. We did that, and DECO actually gave us a green light to proceed to Parliament. We do have uh, all the, the necessary opinions from the Department of Justice and DECO. Thank you, Chairperson. And they were submitted to Parliament, both of them. Thanks, Chairperson. Okay, sorry, colleagues, I was muted. So the question here is that um, uh, uh, whether or not the provisions are in conflict with the current law of the Republic, yes or no?
Don't do me so. Yeah, I think Chairperson, uh, the 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 colleagues who, who are saying the provisions are in conflict could just uh, maybe clarify in terms of which provisions that are in conflict with in terms because the opinion that we received from the Department of Justice actually indicated the provisions that might be in conflict and made recommendations that uh, we must actually. A record, we must actually amend our own legislation. That is what we did by approaching the Department of Justice. The, 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 the conflict uh, was actually highlighted by the Department of Justice and we fortunately for us, the Department was in a process of amending its legislation and they actually took a recommendation of uh, of prohibiting marriages between children who are over the age of 18. I'm not sure if even after. You are fading, that. sorry, Tandega, you are fading a bit. You are not um, entirely audible. Can you adjust with your mic? From where I am. It's non domiso. Non domiso speaking. Yeah, I'm trying to find a place. Yes, I'm trying to find a place where there is. Le I was saying to Mr. A, the legal opinion from the Department of Justice indicated that. The proposed agreement is not in line with our local legislation, specifically the one on marriage is uh, between minors. Mm. And based on that, we were advised to make a recommendation to the Department of Home Affairs to actually amend our own legislation because we are actually in agreement with uh, the SADC protocol that prohibits marriages between minor children. So rather than us not signing the protocol, we opted for, for the option of actually amending our own legislation to prohibit marriages between children who are under 18 to align with the SADC protocol. So if uh, it is uh, stated that it is in conflict with our own legislation, we are actually aware but our position is to actually amend our legislation to align with the SADC protocol because we agree with the position of the SADC protocol to prohibit any marriages that would happen between anyone and a child that is under the age of 18. And the amendment process is, is still in progress, is, is, is work in progress. The amendment process is actually the one that is being uh, done by the Department of Home Affairs, whereby we were actually invited to participate in the process. I'm not sure how far is the process, but I know that the Department of Home Affairs is responsible for that and they are busy with it. Thank you. Okay. All right. Honorable members, um, I'm not seeing any hands and I'm a bit worried uh, that the participation of honorable members on this matter is... is, is is not for coming back. Yes. I can't uh, find my hand. I'm trying, to, I wanted to raise oh, my hand. Oh, okay. All Can right. I'll, I'll, I'll let you come in, Tandega, and then after that, I'll take the hand of Honorable Member Vilma after your uh, contribution, uh, Tandega. Thank you so much, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, indeed, um, we, we, I have discussed the matter and Delco State Law Advisors have shared the two legal opinions that they had done on the matter for the Department of Women and Children. However, they did indicate that they were never asked whether it is possible for us to do a reservation um, 
to the SADAC protocol whilst we are busy amending our laws to be in line with the protocol. They were only the, the second uh, legal opinion that they provided was more on section 2312 in terms of whether we can sign before the entire parliamentary approval process is done. And they had advised that the, because I think that the Department of Women had anticipated that perhaps the head of state would sign during a heads of state meeting that was held earlier on during the year. But because the parliamentary process approval had not been finalized, then the ERCO indicated that it, because this protocol falls squarely under 2312, let's rather wait for the entire parliamentary approval process to be done before we sign. Because once we sign on the dotted line, we are going to become bound by the protocol. Now, the only thing that we are raising here is nothing new. It's exactly what the colleague says was raised by the Department of Justice, that there are those provisions. And here we're picking up on that one with regards to the age of marriage, that it's in conflict with our law. We are aware that there's a process of amending the law, but uh, I think what we need to also take into account is that, is that the law is not yet amended. It is still in the process of being amended. Therefore, as things currently stand right now, our law is in conflict with what the protocol is proposing. So I think that as, as, as the committee and parliament goes forth, whether it, it, it approves or, or what it does in terms of maybe conditional approval or, or however it wishes to, to handle this matter, we must be aware that us being in the process of amending our laws to be in line with the protocol is not equal to us, to our domestic legislation being in line with the protocol at this present moment. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tandega, for that uh, clarity. I will then recognize Honorable Member Vilma, followed by Honorable Member Mpiti. Over to uh, Honorable Member Vilma. Um, thank you very much, Chair. Um, and this last slide that is there, just if you could just leave it, leave it on, sorry, I want to quote from it. Um, it is very difficult to know when we must raise our hands or not, because looking at this last slide just by itself, um, you know, it makes me apprehensive. I'm not comfortable um, to just go ahead and adopt um, or agree with the protocol, um, knowing that my own department has this concern that they've raised on the last slide. So I really wanted to ask if the state law advisor, if they are present in the meeting, but it doesn't seem like they are. Um, I think in the third bullet, um, the still reservations that it says, we don't know whether South Africa can sign the agreement whilst the domestic conflict has not yet been finalized. So it makes it uh, very difficult for me to express an opinion. The previous, um, the previous presentation uh, mentioned the Maputo protocol and now, um, you know, so I would like to ask the Department of Justice specifically, um, have, has there been a case or a situation where South Africa has adopted uh, an international instrument uh, and added a reservation or did not express a reservation? Do we have a precedent of that, um, of having reservations and not adding them to that instrument. Um, so I don't know how, how that works, if you could explain or suggest if there has been a precedent for this. Um, but the main crux of the matter is that the law has not yet been amended and also we don't have the state law advisor here to do a presentation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Vilma. I think you've raised an important point on the issue of us being finished with the opinion or the full opinion of the state law attorneys. It's quite important 
for us to to actually take or make a decision uh, 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 because it's quite important for us to get the full opinion and not only get half of what the state uh, uh, law advisors have advised on the matter. Thank you very much for that contribution, uh, Honorable Vilma, it's quite important. Honorable Mpiti. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. I, you know, I tend to agree with the previous speaker on the points that have been made. Uh, primarily, in my view, I think this is a question of procedure, uh, and it's a question of whether it would be procedural for for this particular protocol to be approved, noting the fact that it is in conflict with. Um, without domestic laws. And I think that should be, you know, in my view, the guidance in which the, the, the committee should take, uh, because to sign an agreement that is in, with, in conflict of our domestic law, um, is that procedural if, an, if there's an inclusion of the reservation? Um, and I think that it really is the question that is at hand. But in terms of the information I've received thus far, um, it does seem that no one wants to, 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 to be preemptive because it's not quite clear what the procedural process of this, of this uh, protocol should be or how it should, it should go about. So um, my, my view at this stage would be that we, we get that, that advice, uh, whether it is procedural to accept uh, the agreement with the inclusion of, re of a reservation or whether to to wait up until uh, the process has completed via um, uh, uh, the change of legislation, which I think would possibly make more sense uh, to, to have that proce process completed before signing a document that would put us as a committee, but also as, as a country in, in conflict. Um, so that would be my view at the moment, Chair. Thanks. Thank you, Honorable PT. I see the hand of uh, Honor. So, no, no, do me so. Thank you, Chairperson. This is a minor one. I just want also to have clarity in terms of the usage of the word in conflict. I do not uh, believe that it is in conflict uh, as such. Maybe we could say inconsistent for now, but to say it is in conflict, it gives an impression that it's uh, we are proposing something that is not uh, in line with, I'm not sure how to put it, but in conflict for me sounds like a, we, what we are proposing is actually not right for the country. Maybe if we say it is inconsistent with our laws currently, because we are in a process of amending that law. So to me, it doesn't say it is in conflict. I'm not sure if maybe it's the termino terminology that is used uh, in this uh, in, 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 in similar situations. But for me, in conflict does not give the actual correct picture of, of, of our status. So you would say that we should use the term not in line? Or inconsistent. It's inconsistent. <laughs> I would prefer that term. But in conflict suggests something else. Okay, uh, Tandega, would you want, would you wish to, 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 to give clarity on the term in conflict and inconsistency, whether it's the, it's different or it's the same? It means that the meaning for me, uh, uh, honorable members, is the same, but we can get clarity from Tandega.
Thank you, Chairperson. I, I, I'm more aligned with, with your last comment. I, I, I think for me, it's just semantics. The, for me, the bottom yeah. line is just it's, 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 it, it doesn't talk to our right. domestic legislation. The two are not talking to one another. So whatever you okay. word we use, we normally, lawyers normally use that it's in conflict when it says something totally different to what we have. But we can say it's not yeah. in line, doesn't agree, whatever that we would want to use. But it means the same at the end of the day. All right. Honorable members, um, there have been um, um, suggestions or proposals from Honorable um, uh, Member Vilma, of which Honorable Member Mpiti has agreed with. But before we, 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 we speak of the way forward or on the way forward, let us receive the presentation from the Department of Home Affairs. I'm moving to the next presentation, honorable members, because I'm not seeing any hands that wish to express anything different from what has been raised by honorable member Vilma, which is us getting further advice or, 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 or unpacking the opinion of the state law attorneys and uh, uh, speak to issues of procedural matters in relation to how we deal with or this protocol that has within it clauses that may be um, a, a, a in conflict with our domestic laws, if I may put it like that. We'll then uh, ask the representatives from the Department of Home Affairs to give us a presentation on the progress uh, that has been made on the agreement amending the gender and development protocol. I'll hand over to the uh, Home Affairs delegation, but I can see the hand of uh, Honorable Mam Sonti, which is up. Uh, Mam Sonti, do you wish to make any comments or ask questions before we proceed? Yeah, th thank you, Chairperson. Um, I will talk on the process of uh, the issue of a, a child marriage. Né? Yes. Yes, um, I think uh, this thing of a, a child a marriage, uh, if I, 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 I'm not wrong, I mean, it must be start. I mean, we must start straight direct from the parents, especially those parents who are uh, from uh, 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 in rural areas, more especially in the Eastern Cape uh, uh, villages, because this thing of uh, uh, child marriages, it's 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 more happening in those uh, uh, places in rural areas. Why I'm saying that we must uh, 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 stick on the parents first, because the child, sometimes it is the parents' agreement who want that child to go and marry in that home, because maybe sometimes they just like that home, maybe the home has got everything, maybe that home of the girl, uh, they are suffering, there is a hunger, there, everything. So they are decided to take that child, even the child, if doesn't want to go there, it must go by force because of their parents. So I think if we can stick on the parents or else we must teach this uh, 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 thing, if it's not, I, I mean, if that is not the right thing to do, we must take talk to the parents first. You must do the parents, both mother and father, more especially the, the mother, the mother, the mother, the mother. Uh, I was just wanted to 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 state that uh, 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 input there, uh, Chairperson. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ma'am Sonti, for your contributions. And I think you are speaking to the most important element that we've raised uh, from the meeting that we had with the department in 2019, speaking to issues of consultation with the critical uh, stakeholders, which includes the, the, the communities and uh, the parents of the children. Thank you for, for, for your contribution.
Yeah, we, uh, we don't want to oh, hear. Sorry, Chad. Sorry, Chad. Sorry. I was tired. Sorry, I was tired, man. Please. My apology, Chai. So, Vile Mama, where's the chair? Okay, can we ask the secretary to just quickly call the chair, check the chair so that she can rejoin? Um, so, Vilema Musondi, Vilema. We heard you, Honorable Sondi. Thank you, thank you. Honorable members, apologies for my unstable network. I don't know whether I'm audible. Yes, we can yes, hear you. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Apologies, uh, honorable members. My, my, my network is suddenly unstable. I don't know what's the cause. But I was requesting the secretary to inform us on who from the Department of Home Affairs is present and will be doing the presentation on behalf of the department. Nelly? Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, Chair. It's Mr. Muzinjoko from Home Affairs who's going to do the presentation. I've given her the co-hosting rights to, to share the screen. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Nelly. Mr. Njoko, please may you, uh, uh, on the briefing by the Home Affairs on the progress made on the agreement amending the gender and development uh, 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 protocol with the president. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, I was trying to, to unmute myself. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Muzinjogo. I am uh, representing the Department of Home Affairs on this uh, uh, portfolio committee. And I must start by apologizing on behalf of my DG. Uh, he is also at the Portfolio Committee on Home Affairs as we, as we are speaking. And the other members of the executive are also out, uh, also uh, at FOSAT uh, meetings or clusters where they are presenting coincidentally the, 
the marriage policy that uh, we are talking about here. Having said that, Chairperson, uh, I will want to switch off my video and then uh, get into the presentation itself. Chair, uh, the purpose of the presentation is to provide an update uh, on the proposed changes uh, of, uh, to the marriage policy and legislation with a specific focus on child uh, marriages. Chairperson, uh, you will recall that uh, South Africa at the current uh, 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 moment or at the, 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 the present moment has got different pieces of legislation uh, governing marriages. There is a, a Marriage Act 25 of 1961. There is Recognition of Customary Marriages Act of 1998. There is Civil Union Act of 2006. There are parts of the Black Administrations Act of 1927. All these, they are playing a part in the uh, 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 in the management of, of, of uh, marriages in the country. Now, what the department has done is to look at all these and decided to have one marriage act or one marriage policy in the country. But for the purposes of today's presentation, I will just zoom straight into the uh, legal provisions for child marriages. The Marriage Act 25 of 1961, uh, I referred to, makes provision for marriage of minors, uh, provided that there is consent and that is legally required. Also, Section 26 of the very same Act states that no boy under the age of 18 years and no girl under age of 16 shall be capable of contracting a valid marriage except with the written permission of the minister. I heard earlier on members were talking about the, 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 the word conflict and, and, or, or, or inconsistency in, 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 in the terminology used. So I will say here is the example of conflict in that you have in South Africa a law that says underage girl of 16 shall become uh, capable of contracting a valid uh, a marriage. That is a conflict because what we are doing now is to have one umbrella of the, 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 the marriage uh, uh, act in South Africa. Now, this provision that I've just uh, 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 quoted of the, 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 the marriage act is contrary to the state's constitutional, international and regional obligations to protect children and to act in their best interest. And that's exactly the reason why we are zooming into uh, prohibiting a uh, absolute prohibition or abolition of uh, child marriages in this country. Now, again, uh, the Children's Act of 38, Act 38 of 2005 has already legislated that 18 years of age is majority and South Africa has also signed that protocol we are talking about on gender and development, which states that no person under the age of 18 shall marry unless otherwise specified by law. Remember the law that we are quoted, uh, uh, Honorable Chair, that Marriage Act of 1961 is not talking about this. So 
Now, what we are doing is to make it a point that uh, 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 the, the, the law, marriage law, as it were, uh, takes into account the best interests and the, the welfare of uh, uh, children. As, as a matter of record, the States SA uh, in South Africa produced a report on child marriages not so long ago, which is in 2017. And they found that in 2017, the civil marriages were registered of two bridegrooms and 70 brides that were less than 18 years old. And with 62 of these brides, marrying was for the first time. A further eight bridegrooms and 77 brides who were younger than 18 years were registered in customary marriages. These figures demonstrate that uh, girls are disproportionately affected by child marriages compared to boys, which is again, honorable members, a compelling case of why South Africa as a country should change its marriage laws and have one omnibus to cater for all, law, uh, for all marriages in the country. Now, what, hap what has happened is the Department of Home Affairs has in its marriage policy, remember, uh, 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 honorable chair, honorable members, we had a green paper that was published and that green paper we received, I'm not sure of exact number, but it, it was in thousands of uh, public comments and inputs in, 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 the, in, the, in, in the green paper. And those comments have now been incorporated into a white paper. Now, the marriage policy as it stands now, as, as, as being formulated, it has included a proposal that seeks to, to criminalize child marriages. Now, to criminalize child marriage means we will be criminalizing the adults who are involved in this. It will be criminalizing those who are perpetuating, who are planning, who are executing these child marriages, be it in the name of Ugutwala, be it in the name of religion, be it in the name of, 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 of whatever belief system that is out there, we will be criminalizing child marriage. Now, in, uh, in 2019, our minister undertook uh, dialogues with various stakeholders, which included religious and traditional leaders human and children's right activists on the future of a marriage policy in South Africa. Now, despite these differences on other policy proposals, all stakeholders were unanimous in that children should not be permitted to enter into marriages, irrespective of parental consent, as mentioned in the Act of 1961, or minister's approval. During the ministerial dialogues, all stakeholders discouraged the marriage of minors and recommended that as a matter of principle, laws that permit marriage should be repealed without exception. Therefore, the legal capacity to, for entering into a marriage contract is 18 years old. Now, given the vulnerability of children, criminal sanctions then shall be visited upon those who facilitate child marriages and those who marry children. Now, the policy recommendation is that one of the foundational principles that will be embedded in the new marriage policy and legal framework it will be the protection of children's right, irrespective of race, of culture, of socioeconomic status, or of religious uh, persuasion. The policy recommendation, the white paper as it stands, 
recommends that no person under the age of 18 should be permitted to marry. It further recommends legal consequences for those who facilitate marriages of minors. And this policy recommendation is in line with the Children's Act 38 of 2005, which I'm hopeful that all members here will be very much familiar with. This act, uh, Children's Act, has le already legislated 18 years as the age of uh, majority or as the age where real consent can be, re can be said to have been given and understood. Chairperson, I would love to end it there unless there are further questions that I may be able to, to respond to. But in the main, I will also like the portfolio committee through you, Chair, to also uh, invite the Department of Home Affairs to speak holistically on these uh, marriage policy uh, proposals that we are going uh, to make as in our white paper. So yeah, I will end the uh, chairperson. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Njogo, for the presentation, which we welcome as a portfolio committee. Honorable members, uh, Department of Home Affairs, I will now allow for hands to speak to ask questions on this as well. The hand of the uh, honorable member. And that is the only hand that I'm currently seeing on my screen. I will hand over to you, honorable members, question. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you for the presentation from the Department of Home Affairs. Just a question of background for myself. Uh, the Children's Act already says that the age of majority is 18. Okay, that's it already says that, but now the Marriages Act. Do you, okay, are you saying that the Marriages Act has not been amended from 16, age 16 to 18? And if not, I want to just know why, because the Children's Act for a long time has said the age of majority is 18. So why has the Marriage Act um, not been amended to include the age of 18 for girls? I just wanted clarity on that one. And then secondly, um, the... The Department of Home Affairs, the legal department, um, what do they have to say uh, about the protocol itself? Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Honorable best question. Um, I'm not seeing any other head sit to ask questions or make comments. Um, but may ask Mr. On the ESLT that the Department of Home Affairs has undertaken, it has stakeholders that uh, you have uh, uh, consulted regarding uh, this process. But um, in terms of the 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 the, the time frames, what time frames can 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 you possibly give us as a portfolio committee on when this process? Uh, can be, be be wrapped up and um, well with be used in Parliament. Um, Honourable Member Charlie. Thank you very much, Chairperson, and good morning to all the colleagues online. Chair, I just want to um, go back to the presentation, slide number four. It states that StatsSA produced a report on child marriage in 2017. Um, and found that two bridegrooms and 70 brides were indeed less than 18 years old, with 62 of these brides married for the first time. So if the Child's Act was amended in 2005, 2017, um, is, it, it's still reporting at the amount of, of, of child marriages taking place. Uh, what is the, the mitigating strategies 
um, put in place to ensure that this doesn't happen outside, of course, of dialogues with traditional leaders um, and, and communities. Secondly, um, how does this white paper then take into account the traditional, uh, the customary uh, marriage, marriage acts and marriage laws that look specifically within different religions as well as different cultures where perhaps underage marriage could be considered as legitimate? Um, how do we then, um, as part of our constitution, sort of, 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 of close that gap to ensure that, um, that especially a girls are not found in, in, in a situation where they are almost forced to get married based on their customs. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Member Sharif. Mr. Njoko. Chairperson, thank you very much for the, the questions. Uh, I would love to 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 go back to to the uh, to the first question uh, about the 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 marriages. Uh, why did we not amend it in terms of the the, the age of eighteen? Honourable members, recall that uh, originally South Africa has had a number of pieces of uh, legislation governing marriages in the country. First, I mentioned that there is Marriage Act 25 of 1961. These are the laws that, or these are the pieces of uh, legislation that are still in force within the Republic of South Africa. And it is for this reason that we have had all these pieces of legislation talking differently, specifically to the matters of child marriages. And it has come uh, to, in, time has come now to, to, to have just one marriage proposal or marriage a, a, a policy that is governing the whole of South Africa, irrespective of race, irrespective of gender, irrespective of the, 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 the religious or the, the, the uh, uh, traditional uh, uh, outlook of, of the individual. So all these have been happening with the passing of the, the, the child uh, of the children's act it is still there it is still in our statute books which means then we must change and put it or be aligned with our constitutional uh, 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 values so what the protocol at the moment is suggesting is also suggesting that please there should be no marriages for under 18, which then means South Africa has got to look into its own statutes and repeal or remove whatever that is not consistent with the stated objectives of the protocol. That is specifically, there should be no marriage for the under 18. And if you put it that way, honorable members, you are sure that you, nothing is left out because if you say age 18, that is applicable whether it's a religious uh, a, 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 a conviction that says marriage of a child is permissible. But if you say 18, that is everybody then will fall into line and understand that there is no child marriage in South Africa in any of the statutes that are still there. So this white paper that we, we, we are talking about, it is, it is now uh, at a stage where it is prepared to go to cabinet and the cabinet will also uh, on approval, send it to, uh, to parliament, which is something that should happen before the end of the year 2022. So I, 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 I'm just giving out uh, 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 the background as to 
Why are we finding ourselves here? And why are we then having to change and have one marriage policy for the country, not for different religious groupings or traditional groupings, but just one legal uh, 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 instrument for, 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 for the country concerning uh, the, the, the marriages. Uh, Chair, I'm not so sure whether I've answered all the questions, uh, but uh, definitely in terms of the time frames, uh, the, the white paper on marriages will come to, to parliament uh, before the end of 2022, because as I'm speaking today, they are still consulting via the, the, the clusters as to consolidating whatever that was coming from the, the public consultations. They are putting it together and then they will have uh, policy proposals and then uh, South Africa or parliament will then choose exactly which one will be constitutionally acceptable going forward. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Njogo. I just, just a quick one, Mr. Njogo. It's expected that, you know, with with the changes in legislation should come the changes in in in, in mindset you know that would seek to prevent uh, our communities from practicing such so is has the department of of of, of home affairs also engaged if not how do you plan on engaging on programs that seek to educate our communities and change the mindset uh, currently that seek to practice such uh, 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 issues of child marriages? Uh, do you have programs that seek to change and prevent uh, uh, um, the culture of, of child marriages in our communities? Chairperson, uh, I can't uh, uh, give you a uh, specifics when it comes to, to, to that in as far as changing the mindset, changing the beliefs uh, 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 out there. But what Home Affairs has done in, in terms of this marriage is to, 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 to have a wide consultation uh, with different stakeholders. We, we, we've been uh, uh, meeting everybody, uh, uh, Chairperson, in as far as the, 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 the marriage policy is concerned. And it, in my presentation, it did come out as all, all stakeholders were of the opinion that, or were agreeing that indeed, let us increase the, 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 the age acceptable for marriage because we will have one definition of marriage in South Africa. So uh, in terms of, 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 of uh, uh, programs, we, we are not really uh, 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 participating or, or, or pushing those uh, 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 programs just to change the mindset. But through our consultations, we, we, we have those instances where really uh, people's uh, uh, mindset are, are, are changed or persuaded to, to, to accept the reality and the constitutionality of, of, of marriages in South Africa. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Njoko. Uh, Honorable Member Maseko Chele. Thank you very much, Chair. <laughs> uh, Chairperson, uh, with due respect to Ubabun Joko, I, his answers, I don't think that they give me assurance that the department is serious about these issues. And uh, I don't, it doesn't give me also the assurance of saying they are really uh, 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 on our side in terms of this, because I'll tell you why, Chairperson. It is almost 30 years now in government. 
And we have been talking about the issue, uh, such issues that like this one that we are talking about today. And he is not even shy away to tell us in this meeting that they don't even have a plan to, <laughs> to redress the situation. Uh, I'm really not happy, Chairperson, very not happy. Because I was, when I raised my hands, I was going to ask a almost similar question like that. Because where I am with the sketch of the GPV that we have at hand, I think every department is supposed to be on their toes in making sure that they look each, in each and every law that impact on the situation that we have today. It can't be that the president is announcing that GPV is a second pandemic, and today we have such uh, responses. With due respect, uh, Babunjok, I think your department must pull up their socks. They must pull up their socks. There are so many issues that uh, 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 lies in that department that impact on women on the issues of GPV. Can we have a committee, if possible, chair, through you or your, your department chairperson, monitor this for us? Because with us, we are just in this uh, committee now, a joint committee. Tomorrow we'll be somewhere doing other things and we won't be able to monitor those things. Through you, chair, we request, uh, I'm a voice, I'm talking in terms of the women outside there. I'm saying we request a dedicated team that works on such things. We don't want next time when we meet, we hear answers like these ones that are saying, telling us about the history that we know. We know the history. We're not interested in history now with due respect. We are interested on progress, how to correct the history. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair, Honorable Member. No matter, but I think it's very important, really, what you have raised. And um, as much as we, the cows, come home, women and children are the most affected in the communities. And I think what really, what Mr. Joko, is what, what, what happens, what is currently happening practically whilst we are still working on, on the issue of, of, the, of this legislation to protect our women and children. Uh, before you respond, I see the hand of Honorable Member Sharif. You may go ahead. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, look, there, there, there seems to be a non-alignment between um, what uh, Home Affairs presented in terms of the prohibition of under 18, girls under 18, um, and then the legal opinion that was shared with us stating that there is no um, outright prohibition um, of, 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 of uh, young children getting married under the age of 18. So, so there's obviously a, a non-alignment issue that needs to be looked at and that needs to be sorted out. Um, secondly, Chair, I think that there is a clear issue um, around how do we ensure that we have a progressive or, or our democracy is progressing um, in terms of liberty and, and individual human rights versus, um, you know, the more traditional religious cultural sector in our country. Um, when we look at the customary marriage bill, as an example, um, that still needs to broad consultation. Um, I, I can guarantee you that there will be opposition um, against some of these recommendations and amendments looking at child marriages and the prohibition thereof. And so I think that um, it, it's a difficult task for the department, but it must be done on how do we find a balance um, between our democracy and our, you know, our, our emphasis on human rights, um, autonomy, self-representation, um, and then how do we then, you know, find the balance between um, the traditional religious and, 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 and cultural sector that we have in our country? I mean, as much as we can argue that South Africa is a secularist state uh, where we do not use religion and culture as part of, of what determines our legislation, I would argue that in South Africa, we've pushed 
the sector um, to, to a very high degree that it almost finds it a bit difficult to find a common a common ground and a common balance between what are actual human rights and what is the custom what is the customs of, of each culture religion tradition state um, and and I think perhaps this is a historical um, I don't want to say mistake, but something perhaps that we overlook in, in, in how do we then say to traditional leaders, look, we understand your traditions and your cultures, but these young girls also have rights. And, and, and if, if they, they should never ever be forced into a marriage or at least made to believe that this is the only way moving forward. So, so I, would, I would also agree with the speaker before me um, that it's, 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 <laughs> there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And they have to go back and, and, and do perhaps some research, do, do, do more um, undertakings, do more consultations to, to, to find how do we balance this moving forward. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Member Sharif. Mr. Njogo, you may respond. Chairperson, thank you so much. Uh, if it came as I'm saying there is nothing that the department is doing, that will be very, very much uh, an unintended uh, 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 consequence of my, 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 my speaking. But Chairperson, with all due respect, the Department of Home Affairs is doing something with GBV, with these child uh, 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 marriages, we are trying by all means to change and just outlaw it one way or the other. We need to do something. So that is why earlier on, Chairperson, I requested that you, 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 you invite the Department of Home Affairs to come and give you a thorough briefing in as far as what are we doing, why are we doing what we are doing, and what will be the role of the parliament in terms of what we are doing. But definitely there are plans, there are movements in as far as the marriage policy in South Africa is concerned. And that is where I said, we are outlawing these uh, child marriages, forced marriages, human trafficking, everything connected to children in terms of marriage is attended to. So it, it, it cannot be that the department is not doing anything about that. But if it came as I'm saying that, uh, my apology, it, 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 it's not what I meant or it's not what so I was supposed to, 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 to have been said, but definitely the department is doing something about all these issues that we are talking about here today. Thank you. Uh, thank you once again, uh, Mr. Joko. Honorable members, I think we have come to the end of the presentations um, as per the agenda items that we have. Any new hands that wish to make contributions to the um, uh, presentations that we have received thus far. We will therefore, okay, I see the hand of Honorable Member Masondo. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Member, okay. All right. Uh, um, Ma'am Tut. Hey, Chair. Apology, uh, Chair. Sorry. I just, I just have a, 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 a slight question here. I just want to find out how urgent. Is we are needed to to approve uh, uh, this uh, agreement amend, amending uh, the SADC protocol on agenda on gender and development. How urgent is that? Because I I, I hear all the conversation that uh, we 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 are still having even more discussions or to further discuss or engage 
on the matter because now I see that we still, still need some time to engage again. So I need just an agency of the of this. Thank you, Honourable Member Mamdudu. That's a very relevant question. I will allow Renji to respond. Thank you, Chair, and thank you for the last thank question. You. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, it's actually we are we as South Africa are very late. We it's it's little it's it's actually embarrassing now because we are stalling the SADC signing of the agreements by the heads of state. Uh, it was supposed to serve in the heads of state summit, and uh, we, we, were, we were not in a position to, to ask our president to sign that. So I think coming forward uh, in the next heads of state summit, this will come up again. So we are really delaying uh, the SADC secretariat, and it's embarrassing given that um, you know, right from the start of the development of the protocol way back in 2006, South Africa has been an active uh, uh, you know, influencer on the protocol. And now at this stage, uh, we are you know, at this point in time stalling, it, it's, it's problematic. So we would want the, co the committee to consider that in terms of the time. Um, we've got a very small extension of time in terms of, of uh, uh, providing SADC with the, the response from parliament. Um, Chair, the second point I want to raise for consideration by the committee is on the, on the fact that the Children's Act is, is um, you know, has a legislation, it's a legislation that is talking about the 18 years minimum. You know, if you weigh one against the other, which legislation plays a bigger role and is more important? And we need to consider that in, in, in particular, if we are proposing to the National Assembly that the country places a reservation because we need to look at the rights of the child versus the protection or adherence to a, 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 a legislation of the Marriage Act, et cetera, which is violating these rights. Those rights are being protected by the Children's Act. We need to keep that at the, at the forefront, Chair. I'll pause there. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, Chair, I also see a colleague, Kolani, from the department who will have a better answer on our, on our timelines with SADEC. Thank you, if you would give him the opportunity. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, thank you, Ranji. And uh, I'll hand over to you, Mtunga, for, 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 for a further response. I can see your hand is up. Um, good morning, um, Chair. It's Mikateko Joyce Maruleka, the Director General of the Department of Women, Youth, and Persons with Disabilities. I'm using Kolani's um, uh, laptop because he had joined. He just called me to, to, to tell me that the process is continuing. I'm speaking from Nigeria. So I hope you can hear me uh, properly. I just wanted to, 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 to apologize. First of all, I think the apology was sent to indicate that I'm in Nigeria, but also to, to, to apologize for, 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 for trying to fast track the process, maybe or to request to fast track the process because I have listened somewhere, but I missed out. I'm not sure whether you've responded to that or not, where there was an issue of the matter being referred back to DECO uh, to get an opinion whether we can reserve or not. I think that that, that would be pointless because um, when people are outside the country already negotiating, people can reserve can be able to reserve. It doesn't need to go back to DECO. DECO had already given its opinion when the matter was uh, uh, first referred to, to DECO. Uh, there were processes that were followed. So I, I just want to indicate that um, if the committee uh, want to recommend that there be a recommendation, then the committee can recommend. However, I still want to point out that Many countries sign, they ratify without their laws complying, but they do it progressively because the instruments say 
they also say uh, 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 achieve progressively. With South Africa, it's even better because we have already started the discussion on amending the legislations so that we align all of them. So sending it back, it, it, it's, it's pointless uh, because it will come back and still be in the same position. South Africa can ratify, even uh, can, can, can uh, enter a reservation, even though I think it's not necessary because South Africa is even better than many countries that have ratified who don't have all these legislations we have already started. So that's what I wanted to say, but also to say that uh, um, SADC had given us up until end of October, mm. we wrote to them and, and, and indicated that um, parliament is in, in the process of addressing the, 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 the protocol and that NCOP, the, the select committee and NCOP had already approved. So they gave us up until December. Uh, and then after December, they said they are no longer going to entertain us because it's it's long. So I just wanted to show that uh, the issue that has been raised is really not an issue uh, of ratification. Um, officials do uh, of 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 reservations. I'm sorry. Officials do reserve even before they get an opinion from the state to advisor. We can, even though I want to indicate that it is not necessary. To, to, to enter a reservation because South Africa is already working on that. So we are far in advance and there's no conflict because South Africa is going that route of ensuring that it's 18 years and nothing below. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, DG, for the comments that you have made. We did receive your apology and um, note the fact that you're out the out of the country with the minister. Uh, honorable members, we've had the contributions from the department. Women has presented, justice has presented, home affairs has presented, CGE in terms of the advice has been given together with the legal services from parliament. Honorable members, which is honorable, honorable member, forward honorable members, that we do need to request the legal opinion from the state legal attorney. That's the first one. And we do, uh, honorable members, need to get an assembly table as well as a deco. We've also heard from the honorable members that a follow-up meeting would be important with the portfolio of the committee to be with us in this meeting. We get the full presentation from the Department of Home Affairs. I must uh, that we have requested is in no stalling and issues on the table that we really need to discuss and iron out before we reach the decision. Those inputs that we've received, proposals that we've received for honorable members to fully agree for us to, uh, to, 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 to an amendment. I haven't had any hand, honorable members, that has defined with the iron out this that we have a, a, a put forward to you. But I will be guided by you. So far, we have supported, that even if it's for a day or two, so that we're able. Uh, to fully satisfy ourselves. To fully satisfy ourselves as a committee so that we are able, uh, honorable members, to agree with no reservations with uh, the amendments of the SADC protocol. 
uh, can I hear hands that would either support the proposals from both Honorable Vilma and Honorable Pity? If not, uh, any other hand that would have a counter proposal that Honorable Members that has been made for us to defer? Obviously, noting the, the, the urgency of the matter, Honorable Members. Uh, that we need to resolve it uh, as soon as possible so that we are able to, to not all the processes on behalf of the country. But it's a matter of agency that we need to deal with outstanding and also a meeting with receive advice that we need to. Honorable members, the proposals are before us. Honorable Masondo. Thank you, Chairperson. I want to second the proposal on the table. Thank you very much, Honorable Masondo. Honorable members, do we have the hand that discuss with the proposal? Honorable Member Tanki. Thank you, Chair. I, I have no problem for us to defer this matter. Uh, I would support that, uh, but I'm also in line with your concern you're raising about the agency. The DG has just spoken about uh, that they have been given until December as a country. Now it's the end of November today. We're rising on the 10th of December as parliament. Um, so I'm speaking now to your agency. So if it's possible that uh, because what, what would help us a lot, and I hope the DG is listening of the Department of Women it would have helped a lot for this meeting under the FOSAT approach to have all of these kind of departments coming here, having met, thresh out all the issues themselves in one room, whether you are justice, you are home affairs, you are women, uh, so that when, when they present here, we don't spend much time about different interpretations. That would really have helped if that was done. Uh, just that they came here uh, on solo battles from their individual corners. So if the DG commits here, uh, if she's still on the platform, that that department can, uh, in, in within this week, have that session uh, so that we come back to this uh, next week. Um, so that because when we rise, at least all of these committees should have uh, attended to the matter. I would not uh, favor a situation where we drag it until 2022, but that will all depend on what type of work led by the DG of Women and all other departments to just quickly go back and refine all of these issues that were necessitating a long discussions and clarities here. We should not have had that in this meeting. If there was one session of all of these under one room, they come to these joint portfolio committees with presentation that has been clarified amongst them. Instead of them here, we need to, they, they, they need to be having divergent views. That would be my support, Chair. So it's basically, it's very, it's, it's, it's a support that says we don't seem to have a choice. We might have to defer this for today.
but is it possible to come back quickly given your point of agency to 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 so that we are comfortable as members because member Nevo as well as member Mpiti raised uh, areas of uncomfortability and we can't just ignore those uh, and just push through thank you chair thank you very much uh, honorable Pianchi. i think you've you've raised a very important matter on the process in relation to the presentations that we've received from all the departments by rights we should have received uh, a, 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 the presentations from the departments singing from one hymn book which means that they ought to have threshed out all the issues before they were presented to us as a portfolio committee so what is important that members have raised um, honorable members is the fact that we do have uh, we, we we should defer this matter but also we should not forget the agency that in which we should be responding to this matter too. So we should give the departments um, until Friday to iron out all the concerns that have been raised by honorable members, but also equally so by other government departments like justice. We convene early next week to deal with the matter so that we ensure that we, we bring it before a uh, parliament rises on the 10th of December. We also, as the portfolio committee, we write the portfolio committee on home affairs and ask them to give support for the articles 8, 11, and 20. And, and then we should end the protocol, and that's, that's the Department of Home Affairs so that they can give us their position uh, as, uh, on this matter. But I think that that's the process that we are requesting the departments to embark on so that when we meet early next week, we are able to get the departments- Sorry, Chair, Sorry, Chair the, host has, the host has um, switched the interpreter's video off. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, excuse me for that. May the host switch on the video for the interpreters. Neliswa. Tabasin, um, I haven't switched it off, but I'll try and, and do it from my side. I'm not sure what's happening. Thanks, Jim. I'm, un I'm unable to start my video, so it says the host has stopped it. Can you assist, Nelly? So we can proceed without the interpretation. Yes, absolutely. Honorable yes. Member uh, Vilma. Okay. We are back on. I'm back on. Thanks, Chair. All right. Um, were you able to capture the summary? No, uh, you, you were saying uh, Department of Home Affairs, Portfolio Committee of Home Affairs, and then the rest, I couldn't interpret. Yes, we were requesting for the Portfolio Committee on Women to write formally to the Portfolio Committee on Home Affairs and ask them to confirm if they give support to articles, specifically the articles 8, 11, and 20 that we had flighted in the legal opinion uh, from, from the legal services of parliament. But we are deferring... Um, the, the 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 agreement to the amendments and then we will be able to uh, proceed once the departments have met and um oh in fact not we are not writing to the to to the portfolio committee we are writing to the department of home affairs specifically but we are wishing for the departments to meet and iron out all the issues that have been raised so that we are able to convene uh, early next week so that we are able to get the departments singing from one hymn book. And I think that this uh, will give us the comfort as the portfolio committees to agree or maybe still agree with reservations as we had put it before. 
So honorable members, that is the summary of the meeting. I am not seeing any other hands that seek to differ with what honorable members have raised in relation to us moving forward on this matter. Okay. With there being no other hands, honorable members, let me thank you for your attendance and your contributions. And uh, let us remind each other that this matter remains urgent, so it needs the necessary attention from both the side of the department as well as the portfolio committees. Thank you very much, uh, honorable members. Uh, the meeting is officially adjourned, or these items are adjourned. We'll request the honorable members from uh, Justice, as we thank them for their attendance, to leave the platform together with the department. We just have one other item as the Department of Women or the Portfolio Committee on Women with and Persons with Disabilities to iron out. Thank you very much, colleagues. Thank you, thank you for your thank contributions. You and um, do call again when we ask you to, 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 to attend and give support. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Melissa. <laughs> Hello, Chair. Can you flight the minutes, please? Thank you. Thank you. Honorable members, before us are the draft minutes for the virtual women with and persons with disability, the 23rd of November 2021, between the hours of of 932 12 37 uh, the minutes or the meeting that was called last Tuesday was to consider the report for the adoption of the BRRR that was uh, served before the portfolio committee on uh, on Tuesday last week present are the members allocated there we had one apology, which came from, oh, there were nine apologies, eh, honorable members, sorry for that. Uh, I will take the minutes as read because they have been circulated by our secretariat. And I will therefore move for a hand that adopts uh, the minutes. Members, are you still present? Uh, yes, Chairperson, good day. I move the adoption of the minutes. Honorable Mbobo. Thank you very much, Mapoloba. Honorable Mbobo has for the adoption of the minutes. Can I have a hand that's up for a second? I'm so empty. I second it. Thank you very much, Ma'am Sonti, for seconding. Honorable members, our minutes have been uh, have, have been duly adopted. We have now come to the end of our meeting with the last item being that of consideration and adoption of minutes of which we are done. I will thank you again, honorable members, for attending the meeting and remind you to kindly uh, hold the chairperson and her family in your prayers that they are able to you know, proceed with whatever necessary responsibilities they have to, 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 to lay Umama to rest. As a portfolio committee, we are with her during this difficult period and the time of loss. Thank you very much, honorable members, for attending and your contribution to this meeting. Uh, Ma'am Sonti? Now, now it was that hand, Chairperson. 
Okay. Thank you. If there be no other items, honorable members, may I bring this meeting to a close and thank you. Goodbye. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank Chair you. Bye-bye. Oh, I want to know. Ah, damn it. I want to check something. Ah, I check. I want to check something. I'm so eager to go to bed. I'm not so sleepy. I'm not 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 sleepy.